Welcome back, Math 30-1. Today we're going to be getting into our first lesson of trigonometry, which is going to be angular measure, but only looking at degrees today. Later on, we'll learn about something called radians. So we're just going to do a little quick overview and look at what certain things are, like what is a rotation angle and what is standard position. So a rotation angle is formed by rotating an initial arm through an angle of a certain degree about a fixed point, or a vertex. So right here's my vertex, we have my initial arm and it gets rotated to something called the terminal arm. Okay, and that is what is standard position. So we could do it in two ways here. I could have a positive angle or I may have a negative angle. So right here we have a positive angle. So I take my initial arm, which would be somewhere around here, and I rotated it so it came down to here. And that is a rotation of a degree of 235. Now, if I say a negative angle, that means I take my initial arm from here and I rotate it all the way, it says here, negative 247 degrees about to get to my terminal arm, which will be there. Okay, so key things here for terms is, this is my terminal arm, this is my initial arm. My initial arm is what is rotated to where it ends being the terminal arm, okay? And it's about the vertex of a certain degree. So now, it wants us for our first class example to sketch the rotation of each angle in standard position and state the quadrant in which the angle terminates. So we look at this 290 degrees. Well, I keep on going here, I go 90, 180, 270. It's a bit more than 270, and but not quite 260, but closer to 270. So it's going to be somewhere right there, and it's going to terminate in quadrant three, or sorry, in quadrant four, because we have one, two, three, and four. So it terminates in quadrant four. Okay, now I look at this one here, we're going negative 135. So Negative 135 is going this way. So now we're going opposite. So this is 90, and we're not quite 180. So negative 135 is going to be there. And we went a total of into from quadrant 4 to quadrant 3. So we finish in quadrant 3 here. Okay? Now we look at the next one. We have 750. So I'm going to have to go 0 to 750. So we start here, and it's positive. So we're going to start going in a counterclockwise rotation. We go once, so that's 360. I go twice, is going to be 720, and then only 30 more degrees, so it's not going to quite reach 90. So it's going to be a bit closer to 360, so it's going to be around there. And that's how we end off. So this is going to give me all the way to quadrant number one. Okay? All right. So now let's take a look at class example number two. It says... A point lies on the terminal of the rotation uh, angle, okay? So we know that these points here rely on the terminal arm. Now, in each case, draw an angle in standard position. So I'm going to first make my axis here. So there's my grid, and we want negative 3, 4. So negative 3 and 4. So that's going to be somewhere right there, and there is going to be my terminal arm. And what is that going to be? In standard position, well, I'm just going to continue this off here. It's going to look somewhere from there to there, okay? Now let's take a look at B. We have 7 and negative 2, okay? So 7, negative 7, negative 2, so we go negative 7 and negative 2. So it's like way over here, down there. So this one's going to look like this here. There's going to be my angle, okay? So here's my terminal arm. My initial arm came all the way from there and went there. I could have also gone from the negative and gone this way or gone that way, okay? But one in standard position and we just wanted rotation, okay? So now we're going to look at what are coterminal angles. This is a key word here. So it says we look at the rotation 150 degrees. Well, 150 degrees is going to give me somewhere around here, okay? So it's going to be 30 degrees from 180, okay? 
and that's going to be 150. Now I go 210, that's going to go this way, that's 180, and then another 30 degrees of 180 here. Okay, so that's this one. Now I look at 510. So 510, I'm going 360, okay, plus 90 is going to be uh, 400 and 450, and then I got to go 60 more, which is going to give me right there to get me to that. And so this is going to be in this section here, 30 degrees as well. This part here is 30 degrees as well. So now I look at that. All of these angles here are end up giving me the same standard angle, right? It gives me the same angle in standard position. Okay, so what does that mean is these are called cold terminal angles. Okay, that's a key thing. Now the principal angle is a set of coterminal angles and it's going to refer to the smallest positive coterminal angle. And that is your principal and it's always going to be between 0 and 360. So your principal angle is your smallest positive coterminal angle. So in the diagram above, my principal angle is actually going to be 150 degrees. Alright, now it says the set now, if we look here, it's going to go, there are infinitely many coterminal angles because I could go constantly over and over and over. So the set is going to be my coterminal plus 360N. So in this case, it's 150 plus 360 multiplied by N, where N is an integer, okay? So where N is actually an integer. So I could have a negative whole number, a positive whole number, and zero. So I could be negative 1, so that would give me 210. So 150 multiply minus uh, 360 gives me negative 210. If I go, if it's 1, that gives me a total of uh, 510, which all are coterminal angles and goes on forever. So here we go for the first, for our class example number 3. It says, determine the angles in the domain of negative 360 to 360 which is coterminal with the following angle. So here we're going to look at 285 degrees. So with this is my coterminal, I want 285, and we're going to plus 360N. Okay, so I could go plus 360 or minus 360. Now if I add 360 to that, that's going to give me quite a bit bigger than 360, so that's not going to work. So the only possible solution I might have is if I subtract 360. So I'm going to have 285, subtract 360, is going to end up giving me a total of 75 degrees. So that's going to give me 75 degrees is my coterminal angle. Okay? Now let's take a look at B. B is saying negative 13. So I'm going to go here, negative 13 plus 360N. Now, if I subtract 360 from this, I'm going to be too big. That's going to be greater than negative 360. So I'm going to have to add 360. So in this case here, I'm going to end up getting, uh, if I add, go negative 13 plus 360, it's going to give me 347 degrees. Okay? Now let's take a look at C. We have 395. Well, the problem with 395 is it's already bigger than 360. So this probably isn't my principal. So we want to even find my principal. So I can't add anything. So I'm going to go 395, and it's plus 360N. Well, if I add 360, it's too much, but I can subtract. So if I go 395, subtract 360, that's going to give me a total of 35 degrees. So there is one coterminal angle. But now I could have another coterminal angle, I'm pretty sure, because if I minus 360 from 35, I'm going to have another one in there. So here's 1, and then I'm going to have 335, subtract 360 again, and that's going to end up giving me a total of negative 325. So these are my two possible solutions for that one. Now let's take a look at part 2. So these are all part 1s. Okay, so we're taking a look at part two now. It says, write an expression involving the polynomial that represents all angles in the domain where theta is 
an element of real numbers that are coterminal with the given expression. So for this one right here, my coterminal angle is 285, so it's going to be 285 degrees plus 360N. My next one here is, well, 347 is actually my coterminal. So for this one here, it's going to be 347 plus 360N. And I should be bringing this in here, where N is an element of all integers, and where N is an element of all integers. Okay? Now let's take a look at my last one here. My coterminal angle in this one is 35. So it's going to be 35 plus 360n, where n is an element of all integers. Okay? So now we're going to look at something called a reference angle. Okay? So a reference angle is always an acute angle from the x-axis. So it's always going to come from the x-axis. In this case here, the reference angle would be this theta there. Okay, so this would be my reference angle, and this one would be theta. So if this was 120 degrees, my reference angle is going to be 60. So right here it says from class exam number 4, in each case, state the rotation angle and state the reference angle. So we have 243. So I look at 243, it is less than 270 right there. So 243 is going to go like this. So that's 243. But now I want to figure out what is the reference angle. And that's going to be coming off of 180. So I'm going to go 243, subtract 180, and that's going to give me a total of uh, 63. So my reference angle is going to be 63 degrees. Okay? Let's take a look at this next one here. We're looking at 337. So 337 is going to be it's in between 360 and 270, so it's going to be somewhere in here. So I look, 337 is going to go like that. And to find my reference angle, which will be in here, I'm going to have to go uh, to 360 minus 337. Because we're this close away, so I'm going to go 360 minus 337. Because I'm almost at 360, and I want to figure out what this is. All the way to 360 is what we're short. And this is going to end up giving me 23 degrees. Now my next one here, we're looking at 70. So I'm going to go to 70. 70 is right there. Well, my reference angle is just going to be 70 degrees. That one's pretty simple. Okay. So let's take a look at this here. This just gives you some ideas of how to remember. So if it's in quadrant 2, we're always going to go 180, subtract the reference angle. If it's in quadrant 1, we're always going to go whatever the reference angle is. Okay. So the rotation angle is equal to 180, subtract the reference angle in quadrant 2. In quadrant 3, the rotation angle is equal to 180 plus the reference angle. In quadrant 4, the rotation angle is equal to 360 minus the reference angle. Okay? So for quadrant 2, it is the rotation angle is 180, subtract the reference angle. In quadrant 3, it's 180 plus the reference angle gives me my rotation angle. Quadrant 4, it is 360 minus reference angle, gives me my rotation angle. And in quadrant 1, it's just the reference angle and rotation angle are the same. So here's an example of question number... So now we're going to look at question number 5. We're going to put this into more practice. So it says, state the reference angle for each of the following rotation angles in standard position. So 195, I'm going to first draw out 195 and figure out what quadrant it is in first. So 195 is between... This is 180, and this is 270. It's between 180 and 270, okay? So in order to find my reference angle, I am going to go 195 minus 180. It will give me my reference angle, which is going to be 15 degrees, okay? So let's take a look at this next one here. We want B. So B is minus 258. So I'm going to draw that out here, and we are subtract 258. So if I go this way, this is minus 180, this would be minus 270. So we're going to go all the way to here, and it's in between there. Now, I look at that, hmm, I go past 180, so I'm going to have to go for this one here. Once again, I'm going to go uh, 258, 
and we go 258 minus 258. It's a little bit harder to look at it this way, where we go past 180. So I'm going to take this angle here first of all. So I'm going to go 360 minus 258. Okay, and that's going to give me a total of 102 degrees. Now that tells me that this angle here is 102, but I want to find this angle. So if that angle is 102, I'm going to end up going 180 subtract 102, which is going to give me 78 degrees is what I'm missing here. Because I go 102, but I still want to get to 180, so what's missing? I go 180 minus 78. Now we're looking at negative 810. So negative 810, well, we have to see how many times that goes around. Negative 810, so I go around once, is negative 360, 720, and then 720 plus 90, it's going to be right here. So I'm going to highlight that so we can see it. That right there is going to be my angle. Now, that's going to be right there. This is the same as, doesn't matter which Part we look at it, it's going to be 90 from each one, so this one here is just going to be 90 degrees. Since it's at the 270, it's going to be 90 degrees, is going to be my reference angle. So if I take a look at question number six, it says determine four angles between 0 and 360, which have the same reference angle of an angle of negative 128. So my first thing I want to do then, I'm looking at this, I want the same reference angle. I want to be able to first find a reference angle. So I'm going to figure out where this is drawn. So I look at this here, if this is negative 128, we're going from this way here, and it's going to end up right around there, okay? So I want to figure out what is my reference angle, first of all, from this here. So I'm going to look at it, I'm going to go, in this case, this is like negative 180 here, and we're short, so from 128, so I'm going to go 180 minus 28, minus 128 is going to end up giving me 52. So I know this reference angle here is 52, which would be the same as this angle here, which would be 52. So when I start this off, we know 52 is one angle. Then I could go 180 minus 52 would give me my other one. And then I could go for another one, which would be in this quadrant here which would be uh, 1, 8, or 360 minus 52. And then I want my 180 plus 52, which would be the negative or the positive angle of my original 128. So that's going to be 180 plus 52 degrees, which would give me this one here, okay? So I, add, I look at all these together, I'm going to end up getting 52 degrees, uh, 180 minus 52 is 128, okay, and I'm going to also get 308 degrees, 180 plus 52 is going to be 232, and, and 58 for, or sorry, uh, Three, yeah, uh, 308 degrees is going to be my last one. So those are going to be my four angles.